In today's lesson on ratios, rates, and proportions, we talk about the difference between ratios and rates, and then we talk further about what a unit rate is. Okay, so we already talked about what a ratio is. We said a ratio is a comparison of two quantities in which the units are related, or I think more specifically, we said the comparison of two related quantities. So a rate is slightly more specific than that. A rate is a ratio, so it's still a comparison of quantities. But in this case, it's comparing different units. Okay, so a rate is a ratio, it's a comparison of quantities, but in this case, more specifically, it is comparing two quantities that are different units. But similar to ratios, and for that matter to fractions, as we've already discussed, rates can be reduced. So if we ever have the ability to reduce a rate because it's a ratio, and because a ratio can be treated like a fraction, we can reduce it. <clears throat> so some examples and some fairly, you know, common real world examples that you might see is, you know, if you went to say Brugger's Bagels and you got a half dozen bagels, the price might be $3.99 for a half dozen bagels. In other words, $3.99 for six bagels. Now notice, the units are different. They're not related to each other. There's money, there's dollars being compared to units otherwise that are bagels. Those are unrelated in any way. Sometimes when you take your pulse, you might measure your beats per minute or in a shorter span of time beats per second. So in this case, you have 14 heartbeats in 10 seconds. You notice again, the units, the heartbeats and the seconds are unrelated to each other. They're entirely different from each other. That's what makes these examples rates, whereas if these units were related to each other, they would be ratios, okay? So though it's not significant, the primary difference between ratios and rates is We'll say it one more time, a ratio, in a ratio, the units have a relationship to each other. And in unit rates, the units are unrelated to each other. They are unrelated to each other, okay? So, in our rate exam, or I'm sorry, in rates, the units are unrelated. So heartbeats and seconds are unrelated. To give you an example of a ratio, maybe I compare something like uh, there are 36 inches to three feet. You should be able to recognize that feet and inches are related to each other because they're both units of measurement. So that's what we're saying when we're saying that in a ratio, the units are generally related to each other, and in a rate, they're not. Okay, so some quick practice. I'm going to do one example down here and leave you to do the other. If we have a scenario written out, such as on a recent vacation, Brenda's, Brendan's family drove 288 miles in six hours, we want to write that as a rate. Okay, so what we can do is say 288 miles, and we can abbreviate it or write the word out, per, remember, we can use that fraction bar, and that's the most common way we're going to do it, or in six hours, okay? So that is our rate. We're comparing the miles to the hours, okay? Some people could argue that you could write this the other way. So if you wanted to flip it upside down, you would just now be comparing six hours to 288 miles, okay? I think it's more customary, and we would all agree, that typically we compare miles per hour. So this is the one that's more likely to be the one that we see. But there's nothing preventing us if there's no restrictions on comparing the hours to the miles, okay? So if we do another one, or what I'll ask you to do is to set up for Victoria's heartbeat 675 times or heartbeats in five minutes, I'll leave it to you to write each of those, uh, write the two examples of rates on your own. In one case, heartbeats over minutes, in the other case, minutes over heartbeats, okay? 
So when we check in in class tomorrow, I'll have you, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that you have those right. Okay. So a unit rate just graduates a little bit further. A unit rate takes a rate. Now remember, we already know what a rate is. It's a comparison of two unrelated units, but we reduce it down. So a unit rate is a rate per one unit, more specifically per one denominator unit. In a unit rate, the denominator is always reduced to one. Now, the way I like to remember this is if any of you take a foreign language or are familiar with how the word one is stated in, in say, Italian or Spanish, uno means one, okay? So if I see unit, I almost think about uno, an uno rate, a unit rate means per one, but more specifically per one of the denominator. So some common examples you might see of unit rates, 55 mile, or 50 miles per hour, you might see that as a speed limit sign. Any of you that are familiar with uh, the old style records or vinyl albums, you know that the bigger albums are based on 33 RPMs, otherwise known as 33 revolutions per minute. But notice in each of these, it's per one hour, 50 miles per one hour, is 33 revolutions per one minute. That's what makes these now unit rates. We're comparing to one, we're comparing to one of the denominator units. So if we have a rate like we had from up above, we had in Brendan's, exam Brendan's example, we had 288 miles in six hours. What we'd like to do is to figure out how many miles per hour. And that's just going to be a simple matter of dividing. Now remember, a fraction is essentially a division problem. So we can do 288 divided by 6. And we can divide that out. Now we know 6 does not go into 2. 6 does go into 28 four times. Now let's see. I know that's going to be 24 with 4 left over. Okay, I'm just going to kind of squeeze it down here, 48. I dropped my eight down after my remainder. Six goes into 48, eight times with no remainder. So this, this rate, 288 miles per six hours, turns into a unit rate, a unit rate of 48 miles per one hour. And Miles per hour, some unit rates can be abbreviated. We know miles per hour can be written as MPH, so we can just say 48 MPH, okay? So in a similar way, I want you to solve for the beats per minute, the heartbeats per minute, knowing that we have 675 beats in five minutes. I want you to solve that as a unit rate that's going to give us some number of beats per minute. So that's going to be left for you to do, and we will check in tomorrow, okay? So the last question I'm also going to leave up to you, but I want you to read it carefully. So this is based on comparing. So if you ever go shopping in the grocery store, oftentimes things aren't in the same sizes. So let's say we're looking at two choices of lemonade, one that sells for 89 cents for 12 ounces, and then a bigger bottle, one that sells for $1.69 for 18 ounces. And we want to know which one is the better price per ounce. Now, that's really important because it's defining for us, because this price per ounce, we're going to say price over ounces. That's the way we're going to set up our two rates to divide out. Price per ounce means price over ounces. So you're going to need to set this up as $0.89 per 12 ounces. And you're going to need to calculate that as a unit rate. And you're going to have to compare that to $1.69 per 18 ounces. And also calculate that as a unit rate. Okay. Now, the one thing I want you to do, because they may look like the same price otherwise, please make a note of this. Round 
to the nearest thousandths, so three decimal places out. Okay, so again, you have everything you need in these notes to know how to calculate a unit rate, and I've set them up for you. Don't do the price of 89 cents divided by 12 ounces. Figure out your answer in, in cost per ounce to the thousandths place. Do the same thing for the other bottle, a dollar 69 for 18 ounces, divide one dollar 69 cents by 18 ounces, and give us to the nearest thousandth the cost per ounce there. And we'll check in on that tomorrow. So you have a little bit of work to do here. You have the unit rate. So I'm going to go back up. You, well, starting from the bottom, you've got this to finish calculating. You have the 675 beats in five minutes to calculate as a unit rate. And you have this to write out as a rate. Write it out as a rate. And that's, should be real. this should be the real quick and painless one for you. So finish that up. Also do the homework you see assigned on Google Classroom. And we will come back and check in on things tomorrow.